Screen Wars. That's right, Screen Wars. That's what I said. Why am I saying that? Because that's exactly what we're talking about here with these vehicles that we're about to review. And that's because you guys have been asking automakers for larger screens or more intuitive screens or sharper images on your screens or easier connectivity or the ability to hook up to the internet <sighs> and a variety of other things. How do I know this? Automakers have literally been bringing you people to them and polling you and asking you, what do you want in a vehicle? And that's exactly what many of you have asked for. Now, before you yell at me, hey, I'm fine with smaller screens, personally speaking, but in these vehicles, we're gonna talk about what they have and what they offer and what many of you have requested. What are those vehicles? Well, starting off here with the brand new Ford Ranger, we have the Nissan Frontier, we have the Toyota Tacoma, the Jeep Gladiator, and the Chevy Colorado. But let's start with the Nissan. From the Ford to the Nissan. That's right, this is what we're gonna actually start with today. And that's because, well, Nissan's got a little bit of an uphill battle. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The Nissan really is at the low end of the totem pole when it comes to screen size. And that's because base models got an eight inch screen or you can upgrade to a nine inch screen. Now, if you look at the screen itself, Frankly speaking, compared to all the other ones, it certainly does look a little bit anemic. However, all the information you really need is there. If you actually look at the screen itself, you're gonna notice a border going around the screen that is over an inch thick, going all the way around. It's a little bit thinner on the top and the bottom. You have physical controls for, uh, for volume, for tuning control, which I really do like. Audio controls are very simple. You basically just hit a button. You can go into a menu and you can actually look at what you're currently listening to and what have you. Um, the other controls are essentially for camera and that's it. That's all you have on the stack where the screen is. All of your heating and air conditioning controls are lower below. Now let's go into the screen itself. First of all, yes, you can get this. Um, it comes standard with Apple CarPlay Android Auto capability. That's important. <laughs> In addition, of course, satellite radio. Now, let's talk about the one thing that you guys are most curious about. You ready? I'm gonna push a button right here on the steering wheel, and I'm gonna see whether or not I can get the system, the navigation system without my phone, to get me to a certain restaurant. Here we go. Please say or select a command. Navigation. Command not understood. Please say again. Take me to Snarf's restaurant. Command not understood. Please say again. Unfortunately, some vehicles really don't care too much about navigation while other ones do. So I'm going to go to menu and yeah, this one doesn't even have navigation hooked up to it and i'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing because frankly speaking you guys can always use your phone and frankly that's probably the best way to go so despite the fact that the navigation is non-existent the system itself actually is very easy to use fairly intuitive going to audio and being able to move around and go to various stations and whatnot that's easy enough being able to use the phone and hook it up that's pretty easy to do as well. And I have hooked up my, well, to all these vehicles at one point in time or another, I've done my um, Bluetooth and it's been a breeze. Well, they're all pretty easy. So easy to use system, not a whole lot going on here. So for those of you like me who are challenged electronically, this actually might be an interesting setup for you. And it's a very easy one to use. We're gonna move our attention over to the forward IP. So. We have two analog gauges and we have a small LCD in the center for information. This is the way I like it. I like physical gauges. I know that many of you do as well. Not all these vehicles have that. All right, one final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in reverse and so you can see the reverse camera. Uh, this one does have uh, your trajectory and that blue center part essentially is where your hitch would be as well. So it makes it a little bit easier to line up with a trailer and get your, uh, get your vehicle all hooked up. And now 
the Chevy Colorado, but not just any Chevy Colorado. Andre's Chevy Colorado, which is famously devoid of cruise control. I know you've heard that many times, but I'm saying that because someone else is gonna mention it. But more importantly, it's also got a couple glitches. Regardless of that, it still does have a very interesting tech system and a very large screen. Let's have a look. Now, I know one of the things that really caught Andre's eye when he was looking at possibly buying this is the fact that he has an 11.3 inch screen and that comes with this vehicle. Uh, very, very clear screen. I would say that it's on the level of being one of the clearest screens I've seen in a very long time. So visually, yeah, it looks good. Um, interesting screen setup because I've seen this on other GM products where they have the volume control kind of up and out of the way, but there's no tuning knob, uh, unlike the Nissan, which had one. This does have a screen that is relatively easy to move around. Everything is easy to swipe and move. And then below it, you have your heating and air conditioning controls actually rather neatly incorporated into uh, the lower section of the screen. And your heating and airflow controls are right there. Pretty easy to use. Now, let's see if the navigation system will work with my voice. I believe it has navigation. Well, we're about to find out. To do that, you need a data plan from your vehicle manufacturer. Uh, I guess the answer is no. <laughs> I mean, there's no... Yeah, look at this. So it says this application requires a connected service subscription. Subscribe to a connected service plan to use feature. Now, because it's Andre, I should shop some of these plans and just randomly find something that he has to pay for, but I'm going to be nice. I'm only kidding, guys. I know you guys think I'm an evil man. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't really see how this is. Wow. So it says here, some app features don't work without a dat uh, data plan. Learn more at blah, 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 blah. So once again, using your phone is the way to work with this screen. Now, there's something very important that I'm going to let you guys in on. A little secret for those of you who don't know. And that is his backup camera. Shall we try it? I'm going to put it in reverse. What's on the brake? <laughs> there's nothing. It shows a warning, and then next to it, it shows that the camera is dead. Now, for those of you who are wondering, you are required to have a backup camera on every current vehicle being built, and it's not on here. So this is something that he's been trying to fix for a while, and they still don't have a fix for him. Granted, this is the first year of this vehicle, and there's always little gremlins that you have to work out, but to be honest with you, it's a little annoying that it's taken this long for nothing to happen. Okay, real quick, we're going to go into some of the stuff that the screen has. There's a lot of customization that's out here, but also there's requirements for certain things on the screen. So, for instance, you can work through uh, a variety of different components with the trailer that you're towing. That's including your electric brakes and your gain. This is very interesting. I think some of you guys might like this and some of you might not. Um, and then, of course, reminders and stuff like that. But we're going to go back here. And then we're going to move over here. Now, check this out. You have air down mode. This is something that's very interesting. I don't see this very often uh, when people are actually concerned about the PSI that you have on the, uh, on the vehicle. So you can actually set your target pressure and it will let you know that you get to that target pressure. Very cool stuff for those of you who are actually off-road. All right, let's go back to this. And then there's off-road control here. This one is pretty cool. Uh, most of this stuff I don't really think is that useful, but you can also do this, right? Which is great. This is very useful having, knowing your air pressure, of course, but also having pitch and roll. And then for overlanding, look at that. This is really cool. This whole thing just works great uh, in that respect. So it's easy to shift through these. And let's go back to this and there, I'm not going to mess with camera anymore, I promise. But then we can go to controls. Now, this is important because your auto high beams, you have to go into the screen in order to trigger them. Um, some people would much rather it on the stock. Also, hill descent controls here. As cool as this vehicle is for off-roading, the fact that that's there and not a physical button, 
a lot of people are not going to like. And then, of course, there's the power window lockout, which Andre probably doesn't want on because he's got kids. Um, there you go. You got lights and let's see here. Drive and park. Oh, look at this. You actually have to go all the way into this screen in order to shut off traction control. No bueno. Honestly, that is something that I would rather them not make me do. So one final thing I wanted to bring up, and that is the center IP, which is showing a digital screen. Now that digital screen is working and it does show you quite a bit of information. I would say that it's a little crowded. Uh, the screen itself is very clear and it's well shaded, which makes me happy, but I would like less information on there. Uh, to be honest with you, frankly, I'd just rather have uh, physical dials on there as opposed to this. But some people like gauges like that and some people don't. Next on our list, the Jeep Gladiator. This one is the Mojave. Now, they just recently revamped the entire interior, including an all new infotainment system with a much larger screen and it's got the latest Uconnect system in it. Now we are looking at an all new interior. Well, mostly new interior, at least when it comes to the dash, because Jeep decided that they wanted to go into the battle of screen sizes. As such, they now provide a 12.3 inch screen. It's set up horizontally. Um, actually, the location is good. There's a couple of unusual things about it. But let's first talk about the positives. This is the newest Uconnect system that's out there. And we've had a lot of good luck with Uconnect systems. They're dummy proof as such, I can use them. This one is somewhat intuitive. It's a little bit busier than the previous system. Uh, if you actually look at it, where it's sitting, the height isn't too bad. I mean, the way a Jeep is set up, I mean, the, the windshield is very high, right? So you do have to look down to look at the screen, but not as far down as some other screens out there. And the Nissan's a good example. So it is relatively close to the windshield. Another thing about it is that all the knobs that control it, the physical ones, are way down below. They're actually beneath the air conditioning vent and you have your volume control here. And then on the far side, you have your tuning control. That isn't necessarily such a bad thing because at least for me, I find it to be one of those setups that gives you easy access while you're on the road to just reach down and grab something and turn it and find your station. Uh, the knobs themselves, by the way, have this cool rubber feel to them, which is very Jeepish. And also at the same time, if you're wearing gloves, frankly speaking, being able to mess with this is quite nice. Now let's go back to the screen. Um, all the basic controls that are on the screen, most of them are repeated in the lower section with the hard buttons. So they're all, you know, they have secondary controls that you can use. And that's also including the steering wheel. I do like having that. A really good example of that would be the heating controls that are here where you can turn on your seat heater or your steering wheel heater using the screen. But also if you look down, you'll see the same thing down here. So having a backup is a nice thing to have over here. On the far side of the screen, you have all of your additional systems set up, including, of course, your hookup here, which is for home. And you can go to media and it's pretty easy to move through the stations that are here. And the cool part, once again, is that you can go down to your tuner knob and still move around to the stations. All right, let's move down, show you what's going on here. There's a lot of stuff going on with this setup with your profile. You can actually change several things. It's very customizable, similar to Chevrolet's setup. But in addition, there's a lot of apps that you can get and actually plug in here as well. Uh, and then you have your off-road pages, uh, Alexa and device manager. Your off-road pages are interesting because this will show where your lockers are locked or not locked. In this case, it's a Mojave, so center locker, rear locker. And then you have pitch and roll. I do like the fact that they allow you to do it separately and your forward facing camera, of course. Now we're not going to be covering too much on cameras, but I did want to get over to here. Now this one has navigation as part of the system. So we're about to test and see whether or not it'll pass the sandwich test. Take me to Snarfs. 
Whoa. Whoa. It says it right here. Snacks restaurant. This is everything I found. Which do you want? It's a little slow in the uptake because I've already chosen it by pressing on the screen because I lack patience. But it didn't take long to do this at all. I'm actually pretty impressed. Let's see if I can get Canceled. out. There we go. That was really easy to use. It did exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, I don't know if you heard this, but the air conditioning system, which is lightly blowing right now, it stopped to hear my voice. So that's pretty cool as well. Once again, we're pretty big fans of the Uconnect system. Now, two more things we're going to check out. First of all, I'm going to put the vehicle in reverse. Foot on the brake. Let's look at that rear reverse camera. It's interesting to me because what it's doing right now is it's showing the reverse camera, which is pretty clear, but it has all this extra space here where it could just show the whole screen. So I'm a little confused as to why they didn't do that, but regardless, it's still a decent size. I'd say it's about an eight or nine inch square. And yes, it is showing your traject trajectory, if I can speak English, and it also is showing where your tow hitch is going. Um, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, all right, let's, oh, you can magnify it now. I believe this will uh, allow you to look straight down towards the hitch as you're hooking up. So if you have to hook up a hitch solo, it does help out quite a bit. Okay, so let's put this back into drive. Now, let's have a look at the center IP. You have two physical gauges. Those are proper physical gauges. They are very well uh, illustrated, I would say. Probably some of the better ones in the business in my book, considering that this is a truck. Those things are very trucky and cool and off-roady all at the same time. And of course you have your center digital display. I would prefer having my fuel and temperature also part of those physical gauges, but it's not so bad as set up. And the other part is just like all the other trucks, this does shift around. You can see some other things, but one final thing I wanted to mention is the antenna placement. So with all the changes that have happened with the infotainment system, they went and removed the physical antenna so it's no longer sticking up and they have integrated it into the glass. You may recognize this brand new 2024 Toyota Tacoma as our Toyota Tacoma. This is what we call Blueberry. And it is pretty much all new from the ground up, and that's including its infotainment system. We weren't able to afford the one with the really big infotainment system, so we got the one with the standard infotainment system. There have been a lot of changes to the Toyota Tacoma recently, and the interior is no different, and that's including the infotainment setup. Now, just so you guys know, we have a mid-level Toyota Tacoma, and we didn't opt for going for the bigger screen. We wanted to get this vehicle as soon as we could, and this, I think, was the quickest way to do it with the base-level screen. That means it's an 8-inch screen, which is itty-bitty compared to all the other ones. However, if we opted for that big screen, it would be the biggest at 14 inches. With that being said, I will say that... The screen controls themselves are okay. Uh, this is definitely closer to the Nissan level than it is to say where that Jeep was. And in terms of the overall layout, it's very simple and relatively intuitive. Now here's the cool part. Here's your screen up here, and then you have your vents, very similar to Jeep. And then below that, you're heating and air conditioning controls, and they're very easily set up and accessed, right? So it's easy to set up your buttons here and go into your modes. I love toggle switches, by the way. And the knobs for both the heating and for the fan speed are massive. Now in the same location as the Jeep, that would be where your tuning controls are. You don't have that on this screen. You have to actually use the screen itself to tune. So let's look at the screen. Uh, you'll see that there's, similar to the Nissan, a fairly thick border that's going all the way around it, making the screen look a little bit bigger than it actually is. And then your volume control knob is integrated directly into the screen. If this were the larger screen, the volume control, uh, the volume control knob, I should say, is also hooked up to the screen, basically. Um, but this setup here, well, it's relatively easy and I'm going to give Toyota a lot of credit here because the screen is sitting up high. It's not down low and it means that you don't have to take your eyes off the highway and drop down too terribly far. The Jeep is a little bit better with slightly higher, but also a very different type of physical setup between the windshield and the screen. Now, looking at the screen, what can we do with it? 
not a ton. There are a few things here that you can do in terms of vehicle alert, your all-wheel drive system. We've definitely played with that before. Uh, your audio setup, relatively easy for you to figure out how to, you know, go through favorites, tune radio, whatnot. Um, phone controls, fairly easy. Once again, everything here is just very simple. I don't necessarily mind that because this setup is relatively intuitive. However, there is something that you guys probably already know, but if you don't, you're about to find out. Now, let me see here. Here we go. I'm going to press this button. Navigate to Snarf's Restaurant. Hmm. Sorry, you have to be subscribed to Connected Services to use navigation feature. To learn more about what you can ask me, please say help. Hell no. Man asking for help, please. All right. I'm going to shut this down. Okay. Subscription, once again. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I know a lot of you are not as well. So I apologize for that, but that is part of the deal. All right, let's see how the camera looks when I put this vehicle in reverse. Okay, a little bit different than some of the other ones. Uh, it is showing your trajectory, which is great. And then it has these extra blue lines indicating where you currently are. Um, there is a line here. I'm guessing that pretty much runs directly to the hitch. I would say that the other ones are superior because they show the line going out from the hitch way out so you can line up easier for whatever you're going to tow. So I'm not a big fan, but let me see here if I change it. Yeah, that just pulls it a little bit further back and gives you a fisheye view. And then, well, this one changes it a little bit. It has this cross thing, but I'm not really a big fan of that. And that one doesn't react to the steering wheel at all. So I don't, oh, and then this one here is even less. That's strange. I never knew it did that. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. So it does have the line. You just have to go to the right screen in order to find the line that goes to the hitch. And it's showing your telemetry where, or your trajectory telemetry. <laughs> okay. And there we go. That's the original one. So it actually gives you quite a few things to choose from. Some of them don't make a lot of sense to me, but that's still better than nothing. Okay, one final thing to talk about, and that is your digital screen in front of you, which is, wow, it's very clear. It's definitely digital. You're not going to um, mistake it for any other screen. I'm not a big fan, to be honest with you. Now, this does come standard on this trim. I would say that I'd much prefer have physical gauges, but these are at least very clear. And of course, you have the center component here, which is something that will change based on what you're selecting. But for the most part, the overall setup in this vehicle is very logical. It's definitely much more modern than the previous Tacoma. I'm not a huge fan of any of it, but I'm curious to your perspective. I mean, am I being too picky about the whole subscription thing? Am I being too picky about this digital screen? And now we land on the brand spanking new 2024 Ford Ranger. And this has a new infotainment system as well, on top of a lot of other new stuff. So let's have a look and see what Ford's done. I'm going to take my glasses off in a very dramatic way. And that's because I'm in the Ford and the Ford is very different than the other vehicles. And that has partially to do with what they've chosen in terms of screen size and knob location, button location. For, let's first talk about what you can get. There's a 10.1 inch screen available. However, this vertical screen you're looking at here is 12.4 inches. It wins the screen size battle, at least with size. Location, I have a feeling that people at Ford said, hmm, let's look at what Tesla's doing and let's try to mimic their screen. I'm not a big fan of that personally. Now, this is once again my own personal thing, and that's because large screens, this shape, force you to take your eyes off the road and scan downwards. Uh, temperature controls, if you're looking at this screen, I mean, they are all the way down here, and then your physical knobs are at the very bottom of the screen. Now, while the knobs themselves are quite good, and so are the buttons, this is all for heating and air conditioning, and the volume control is in the center, 
that's not so bad, but you have to take your eyes very, very far down compared to the other vehicles in order to get to these buttons and knobs. And that's kind of a bit of an issue, at least for me. Once again, my perspective. Now, the screen itself, it's the biggest one here. And there's a lot of stuff going on here with controls. And that's including your seat heating controls, which are on the bottom. You do have redundant controls in terms of being able to control your heating and air conditioning systems down here. And then, of course, music. Yeah, there it goes. Um, there's your audio, phone, phone. There it goes. And, of course, there's our towing. Um, I do like this because you are able to assign trailers to this in order to make things a little bit faster when you hook up and need to go. There is a checklist here, which is pretty cool because there's a lot of people out there who actually could use a little bit of help figuring out how to hook up their trailer. So it's nice to have this set up. I've actually seen this before and I really do think this is a great idea. An awful lot of people out there just don't know. Okay, now with that being said, there are other settings that you can look at as well. And we're gonna to go to the home page. And yes, just like all the other ones, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Uh, oh, if you're wondering, uh, the Chevrolet is fine with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's the electric vehicles that are ditching, at least for now, <laughs> those systems. Okay, uh, something I wanted to show you guys here that I kind of dig, check this out. I'm gonna hit this sketch button. And there we go. What's going on here? Well. That's, look at that, the big number eight. It reminds me of, if you put this together with that, and eight means Nate. Oh, did I just do that? Yeah. So there, this is great if you have kids in here on the board, they could sit there and draw all day. And what I mean by kids is Roman. He would probably be into that as well. Um, and then the whole camera system. Now see how this is set up here? Well, watch what happens when I go into reverse. That. I really like that. I know this is dirty. Uh, we just came back from going off-road, so I do apologize. So you have this, probably the best camera setup out there in terms of having this stacked because I'm seeing where I'm going here. I have a pretty good idea of what's going on with my hitch and where it's going to go. Uh, and then I have the bird's eye view and I love bird's eye view and you can deactivate the parking warning, which is huge. Here we go. Well, come on slide there yeah i like that because i can't stand that parking thing you can also change the round that is the downward once again i apologize this is so obscured but you're looking straight down at the hitch to hook it up this is probably the most um detailed out of all the vehicles that are out there in terms of all the camera stuff that's available but wait there's more so now i'm about to try the audio thing and see what happens Take me to Snarfs. Which item would you like? One. Starting route to Snarfs. Damn. Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. That is the most impressive Please setup. To okay. Yes, I know. Okay. We're good. Thank you so much. Uh, let's get rid of this. And now we're done. Okay. That is the best system out there so far, at least in terms of audio recognition, figuring it out quickly, giving me guidance uh, out of all of the trucks that we've sampled today. That is by far the best. One final note, center IP, all digital. Um, very big screen. I'm not, um, not really loving it per se. It's interesting. Technically speaking, it's three screens too. This is different than the center screen, which is different than the side screen. Um, but it's, it, it's giving you the information. It's giving you what you need. It's just not necessarily what I would prefer. Once again, I'm one who likes physical gauges as opposed to digital ones. Okay. But let's talk about um, what this all breaks down to, because there's something very important we should talk about across the board and that is once again this big screen here on your right yeah i gotta tell you having to take my eyes down now almost all of them had my eyes up here right so maybe six inches down from the center of the windshield eight inches down this one is forcing my vision much much further down and these knobs way down here well they don't quite correspond to what i need 
up here. So perhaps that's the biggest issue. It's clear, the system works very well. There's a lot of selection in here. I would place it somewhere between the uh, Uconnect system and the one that Toyota is using in terms of clarity. Uh, but the bottom line is that having to look down is really a deal breaker for me. Now this is something that I want you guys to chime in on because it's really important. Some of you guys want that bigger screen and some of you truly do not. Some of you want better connectivity. Some of you guys want to be able to access the internet or use apps. And some of you absolutely want nothing to do with that. The bottom line is that you basically all have to have a backup camera apparently except for the Chevrolet. <laughs> it's a bit of a joke. But what happens after that? Do you need more? I don't know. I'm kind of curious to your perspective. At the end of the day, I think that the system that's being used in the Jeep, its location and its usability is pretty good. It also comes standard. Granted, that Jeep is extraordinarily expensive, but that's beside the point. This Ford system looks quite good, but there are some issues, including where you have to drop your eyes in order to use it. I would say at the end of the day, my personal choice would be the Jeep. And I've used the Toyota's big screen before, but because we don't have it here to represent itself, I'm going to say the Toyota probably comes in third and the Nissan probably in last. And then you know, Chevrolet, it's really hard to judge because it doesn't have a functional rear view camera, does it? So we'll throw it in probably actually last last until that camera is fixed. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me. Let me know what you think.